Per Strohal, may I uh, introduce the Swedish Minister for EU Affairs, Brigitta Olson, as she will have to leave in 10 minutes. Thank you, Ambassador. Madam, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. It is a great honor for me to be here today among you friends. And um, I've been working with a lot of you in the audience through the years and uh, also with some of the politicians and representatives from different nations and from the European Union. And I can truly agree that, um, that Commissioner Stefan Füle is one of the most important parts in the European Union to push for, for enlargement in our union. And of course, we have Amnesty here today also being a great representative from the civil society, pushing our, us as politicians to deliver results. And of course, also my friend Natalia German, that I will meet later on in the afternoon to discuss the future of Moldova and how to push for human rights in, in the country. A young girl once wrote in her diary, how wonderful it is that nobody needs to wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. The name of this girl was Anne Frank, and I guess that some of you, at least in the audience, used to read her remarkable diary when you were kids and went to school. We all know that Anne Frank died in Bergen-Belsen in 1945, but her words that nobody needs to wait a single moment to improve the world did survive through her diary. I think in tough times in the European Union and Europe as a whole, it is important to remember that this union was founded on the ruins of the Holocaust and the Second World War. And the European Union is made out of the belief in liberty, democracy, human rights, respect for fundamental rights, and the rule of law. And that's why we're here together to acknowledge these important values. It is a privilege for me to be here today as the Swedish Minister for European Union Affairs and Democracy Issues to welcome you to Sweden and to Stockholm. I know that it's kind of cold outside. We had our first day of snow, but I know that the discussions will be very warm and friendly during these days. And I feel especially honored to speak among so many representatives from the civil society. You are the key force to push politicians like me to deliver good results. It's my firm belief that a strong, solid civil society within a country does not only foster freedom and democracy, it helps to make change happen and to make it last. Civil society organizations help us governments to make sure that we're really doing our job. And democracy, it is a state of mind. It's a filter through which we all can see the world. But it also takes time and determination and always political courage to grow democratic structures. And the Eastern Partnership was launched in 2009 on a Swedish and Polish initiative. We have our friend, our ambassador here from Poland also in the audience. It was launched to support the development of increasingly strong political and economic ties between EU and its Eastern partners. And it was launched to develop good relationships built on trust with our neighboring countries. Sweden believes that uh, EU integration was and still is a key tool for the Eastern European countries in their efforts to modernize their societies and also to become more market oriented. And Sweden's focus will remain on the strengthening of democratic institutions and the civil society, but as well as on sustainable development. Today we can offer a far-reaching legal framework for cooperation between your countries and the EU. We can also offer an association agreement with those partners that so choose. Such an agreement can include a free trade agreement, opening the door for free trade with the world's largest economy. However, the Eastern Partnership is tightly linked to tough conditions on partner countries. Tough conditions, I would like to mention that especially. And countries that seek a close relationship with the EU needs to demonstrate, sound and clear, their commitment to the values of human rights that underpin the European Union. The Eastern Partnership is, in other words, more than a set of institutions. It's a true sense, a bearer of values. Sweden will continue to be at the forefront of the Eastern Partnership, promoting an active and forward-leaning EU policy towards its EU partners. 
and Eastern partners. Sweden will also continue to strongly insist that respect for fundamental human rights remain key among the benchmark by which in progress in partner countries is measured. In all six partner countries, the current situation is far from acceptable and it will take efforts by both officials and civil society to overcome prejudice and discriminations in their societies. And I hope that all participants here today in this forum will spend these two days reflecting on how we together can contribute to addressing these important issues. Freedom of expression is a cornerstone of a democratic society. Internet, social media and mobile phones should continue to play a crucial role as instruments for democratic participation. The same human rights that we have offline must also be protected online. And I know that they are key for many of your organizations here today in your struggle for democracy. The test of democracy is the freedom to criticize. And equality here is important to mention. Another issue for me, not only as a minister and a liberal, but also as a feminist, of course, equality between the sexes, a commonly held value in the EU. The EU has official goals stating that women and men should have the same opportunities when it comes to combina combining work life, private life and family life. And that's also a part of the human rights package. And it's also a necessary prerequisite that, we're tr that if we're to achieve growth, employment and social cohesion. I have a young daughter myself and I hope that she will grow up in a Europe where no one questions her choice in life, no matter it depends on her gender identity or her choice of partner. And I'm also happy to here to say that we have many LGBT organizations that really face a tough future uh, in their countries. Um, and I hope that we will have a Europe in the coming years uh, where no one preaches hate, hate against lesbian, gay, bisexual or transgender people. To be silent on the violation of human rights is also a choice and it, it's, it, it's unacceptable. We know all today that Europe and also the European Union as a union do have many challenges in the fields of human rights. And I would like to mention especially one minority. More than 60 years of European cooperation in the fields of human rights have passed and still the history of the Roma people is not told in the European classrooms. Few people know that around half a million Roma were murdered during the forgotten Holocaust. And that's something that we need to push more efforts to acknowledge and to change. As politicians, um, I and my colleagues in Europe have a responsibility uh, to break the Roma exclusion wherever it may occur. And it's neither dignified nor sustainable that a large group of people are subject to isolation and sy systematic discrimination in Europe today. Because human rights are the foundation of the European Union. And Europe cannot only be the continent for the majority, it must also be the continent for minorities. I would like to also to mention one other minority that we need to fight more in the European Union and in the countries that would like to be members in the future, and that's people with disabilities. They should have equal rights and entitled to dignity, equal treatment, independent living and full participation in society. Enabling people with disabilities to enjoy these rights is the main purpose of the EU's long-term strategy for their active inclusion. Another area that I would like to highlight is the freedom of association and the freedom of assembly to organize and together uh, with other individuals promote, pursue and defend common interests. That is fundamental for the protection of our core values. And here trade unions Political parties and non-governmental organizations are essential for a democracy to flourish and to become stronger. People-to-people -people contacts and interaction between civil society and governments are vital elements for society to develop towards greater respect for fundamental values. And governments that are aware of this, that is why autocratic leaders often crack down on civil movements, knowing that a vivid civil society will be a driving force towards a change that the dictators sh for sure fear. And I would like to end by stressing that you are not only the future of your country, you here today, but also the future of the European Union. And that is why events like the today's seminars is so important, because we are listening to your stories 
and try to translate them into a European future. Václav Havel, that died just a year ago, a democracy activist and the former president of Czechoslovakia, once said, I will end by quoting him, he said, I really do believe in a system in which words are capable of shaking the entire structure of government, where words can prove mightier than 10 military divisions. And I share this belief. And I share the belief of Anne Frank that how wonderful it is that nobody needs to wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. Thank you so much for letting me be here today. And a thank you for the organizers to arrange these two marvelous days. I think you will give a lot of new stories, a lot of new examples, and a lot of push to us as politicians to be committed to the agenda of a greater and more democratic European Union in the future. Thank you so much. Madam Minister, thank you for being here with us today and for the hospitality of your country for hosting this forum.